Hey, I am an interaction designer at Red Hat on the UXD team. Um, I'll let these guys introduce themselves. I'm Gina. Um, I'm an interaction designer on the UXD team as well. I'm Rachel. I'm an interaction designer on the UXD team. Um, so we're going to be talking to you guys a little bit about uh, pattern fly today and designing in the open. Um, so just as a note, this is the first talk in a series of pattern fly related um, talks. So we definitely encourage you to attend the, the ones later on today. Um, and just quickly um, to go over the agenda, we're going to do a little bit of an introduction, go over what open source is. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the idea already, but we'll also go over design systems and then talk a little, about, a little bit about Patternfly, um, why you should use it, how it works, how you can use it, um, and then we'll have some final takeaways for you guys. So uh, Gina's going to kick us off. <laughs> Okay, so as many of you have um, been contributing to, and probably already know, open source, the definition is written on the screen, but I'm going to read it anyways. Um, it's denoting software for which the original source code is made freely available and may be redistributed and modified. Um, so there's many benefits to open source, but some of them are flexibility and agility, um, as well as cost effectiveness, culture, a culture of collaboration and transparency, and then better access to innovation. Um, there's other areas where open source principles are applied other than just software, and those can include hardware and um, digital services like video streaming services, and then some research areas as well. But within the software field, um, GitHub, which I'm sure most of you have used, is a widely known and used example of open source um, in which a massive community has evolved from. And it's primarily used for code, although it's a great place to host an entire design system. And since it's an open area where the community can see and contribute to it, the design system can get constant feedback and grow as it goes. So now, design systems in general. So what's a design system? They're, um, con they're involved of components and um, other smaller modular elements that are used to create a UI. So here I'm giving some examples of existing design systems. That one on the left is Google, and they use the material design system. On the left, you'll see that there's that snapshot with the purple highlight, and then on the right, there's one with the red highlight. And that just, um, that is an example of some product differentiations that come from the original elements that they use within the design system, and then each product then has its own flavor kind of thing. Um, the bottom one is Apple. So there you can see all of the little elements that they use to create a larger UI, like the emoji keyboard, uh, the switch, the copy tooltip, etc. And then the top one is IBM, and they use the carbon design system, and that is a full snapshot of all of their elements combined, but if you can imagine, um, each section is is introducing different information, but it all looks consistent and has a similar feel. Um, so Red Hat has its design system that it uses across its products, and it's called Patternfly. Um, it's an open source design system built to drive consistency and unify teams. And it provides design documentation, components, and code examples for users to build responsive and accessible user experiences. So some of those components are shown on the right here. Um, drop down menus, some buttons. Um, there's also some chips that become a chip group down there. And then we would use those components to build the screen on the left. And you can just see some similarities there um, just from those examples. So I'm going to now go into why you would use Patternfly and give some specific reasons that make it pretty cool. Um, so our design system is modular and flexible, and modular design systems enable you to take very isolated patterns and combine them to build complex designs that can support different user tasks. 
Modularity helps ensure consistency, um, which you'll see across all the full screens that I show. And since the isolated pattern shouldn't change much between the contexts, you'll see that those similarities carry on. So the layout specifically here, layout structure, the layouts pattern fly offers help you easily organize and arrange these components on a page. And we supply you with the documentation, like I said before, of how exactly to use those components in your application. And it ultimately improves your workflow and gives you more time to think about the higher level aspects of your application. So everything is responsive, and when we design, we always design mobile first. Um, here, it's a little difficult, difficult to see, but you can see the different breakpoints that we offer in Patternfly. Um, and the cool thing is that all of our components are built to be responsive, and designers and developers can rely on the CSS to define that behavior. So like I said, these are the breakpoints, and as the screen width gets smaller, some of the design will change, which is why we offer these up front. And again, that will supply you with more time to concentrate on other aspects of your application. So another thing, big thing, is accessibility. So in addition to modularity, flexibility, and responsiveness, our design system is accessible. And designs are evaluated to consider all the ways a user might experience the component so, the component, um, so that the design is solid before we develop it. So semantics and visual representation are decoupled, allowing the component to use semantic elements that fit the context of the component. Um, an example of that would be within an accordion, which I I'm not showing here, but the heading level in an accordion should be based on the heading level that comes before it. And then um, for like actions in a menu, they might be links to other pages or buttons that open a modal. All CSS styles are also programmatically checked for accessibility violations. And if you're interested in learning more about accessibility, we're having another talk after this um, that will go into a more deep dive about that. So lastly, within our design system, everything maps to the variable system. So we have, um, obviously our team is comp composed of designers and developers, and we have a design library that they're able to use, which you see a little bit of on the left, and we break it down so it matches directly with the variable system. Um, so it was created to parallel the CSS. So not only does that make it easier for designers to design, but it also allows designers and developers to talk and communicate on a more um, more of the same level. And all of the colors name color names, for example, here will match with the variable name that's listed on the right. So now I'm going to give it off to Bree to talk about how Patternfly works. Um. Okay, great. So now we're just going to take a, a little bit of a deeper dive to look at Patent Flight in action. Um, so just to sort of go into the flow a little bit more so we all know how this works. Um, so this is just a quick flow that shows the general process we go through to add to Patentfly and to keep the design system updated and constantly evolving. Um, so first we have feature requests, um, then we go through a little bit of a discovery phase. After that we'll pass off to design and we'll actually build the component out. Um, and then of course we have to implement it, which is the final step. Um, okay, so the first step is feature requests, and there are various ways that requests come into Patentfly. Um, each type of request generally follows the same design contribution flow. Um, so the first kind is downstream adoption, um, and this is when a when someone might have a component that's already designed in another product, um, but it's not yet exists in Patternfly. Um, so that request will come in to add that component to Patternfly for others to use. Um, we also get completely new feature requests, which are similar to downstream adoption option except that the component doesn't exist in another product nor does it exist in Patentfly. So with this type of request the design is added to product and the design system simultaneously. Um, and then we also have enhancements. So this kind of request comes in when we do have a particular component in Patentfly. Um, but for example, maybe a new use case comes in um, that requires an addition to the component to make it more flexible so we can use it in different contexts. Um, so for example, if we wanted to add a multi-select option into a component that was previously single-select. 
Um, so after we get those requests in, we go through a little bit of a discovery phase to learn more about what's actually happening. So um, we dig deeper into some of the use cases and the requirements. Um, and this is a multi-step process that does involve um, looking at it from multiple perspectives to make sure that we're trying, we build a well-rounded component that can be used across multiple products and contexts. Um, so first, we'll do some background research to get a feel for what already exists. So for example, there's navigation um, on the right-hand side of the screen here. So say we want to add navigation to the design system. We'll ask some questions like, how common is this? Um, we know this is pretty common. I'm sure most of you have seen navigation from redhat.com to Gmail. Um, it's a pretty frequently used um, component. Are there already existing conventions for this? There's definitely are, so we don't want to reinvent the wheel and create a navigation that is confusing or that doesn't work the way people expect it to. Um, so we also want to look at what products would use this, um, how it works, and you'll notice that navigations work pretty much the same across things, except they do vary in color or theme, animations, um, typography, things like that. Um, and then once we know a little bit more about the background, we want to look at use cases. So for example, if we take this other component, um, the selection drop down right there in the center, um, that might be needed across a wide variety of products and contexts. So for example, we could use that in a form, we could use it in filters, it might appear in a toolbar. So we need to make sure we're taking all those use cases into account when we're building this out. Um, and then finally, after we're kind of, we've kind of dug into this a little bit more, we do want to come up with requirements. That way we have sort of a vision going forward with this component. Um, so it's important to consider here which functionalities are non-negotiable for this component um, and which, if any, enhancements should also be included. So this last example in the bottom here is an alert. Um, in that case, we might, we might say that a, a title um, and a description are required elements, um, but enhancements might include allowing people to change the color, the icon, um, maybe adding a call to action or a dismiss button, or maybe even changing the amount of time before that alert alert dismisses and goes away. Um, and the cool thing about being open source is that we can host a variety of channels to have these discussions. So we make sure we do get those multiple perspectives to build out this big, well-rounded component. Um, and those are all available for the community to um, participate in. Um, so after discovery, of course, we need to design this. Um, we need to know what the component looks like, how it behaves. Um, on our team, will often use Sketch to build out components. Um, and this was mentioned a little bit earlier, but we have a Sketch library that um, developers and designers could use, but it has a library of all the components in Patternfly, so you can easily pick out those components you need and, and build out a full screen. Um, these designs also include schematics in context mocks and a variety of specs. You can see a toolbar. Um, the top one is it all spec'd out using our spacing system in Patternfly. Um, and below it, you can see it without all those spacers and how it might look um, but right before you throw it into a product. Um, some designs also require a little bit further documentation. So we might have a detailed write-up, um, including when you should use it, how you should use it, um, what it looks like in context, how it responds on mobile, um, how it may or may not interact with other components. So trying to really give any users of this component a good idea of where it lives and, and how it should interact there. Um, and all of these designs are shared and reviewed in our bi-weekly pattern fly demos. Those are also open to the community and we do record them and host them on our YouTube channel. So we encourage you to check that out. Um, but again, this process just really helps us see the design through multiple lenses and make sure that we're addressing as many needs and use cases as possible. Um, and the last thing about design too is that it's important to remember that none of this is set in stone. It's not unchangeable. Um, we often get, like I said earlier, bug fixes or enhancements. Um, people open PRs on our GitHub to so make sure that these components are always being updated. And that can mean addressing new use cases or like maybe fixing strange behavior that we didn't foresee the first time around. Um, and so the last step in the process is development. So for Patternfly, we do create components in both HTML, CSS, and React. Um, and it's pretty cool on our site. You can interact with the components to see how they work and, and see them in different contexts. Um, and throughout the stage, there is communication, of course, between the developer and designer to make sure the component is being developed as desired. Um, sometimes things will come up, and it might require more design work and go, go back to figuring out what it should look like and if it should work 
work a different way than we initially thought. Um, sometimes it's a technical limitation or maybe an unaddressed use case, um, but they'll often work together to address that issue. So while the flow diagram does look linear, there's always opportunity to take a step back and sort of refine any previous work that we've done. Um, this implementation also is shared in our bi-weekly Panfly demos are shared on GitHub, um, and we encourage all of you to take a look at that and contribute if you'd like. Um, but yeah, now that we've covered the flow, we're going to get into a little bit of how you could use Panfly um, and maybe contribute to it. Great. Thank you so much, Gina and Bree. So how can I use Panfly? We're going to walk through the use case today of implementing a table. So um, at first, kind of think through a time you've used a table, you've implemented a table, um, and think about some features or elements that were um, included within that table design. You probably fall within one or two path, um, pathways when you need to implement this table, which is you have a, de a design that was delivered to you by a designer, or you have no design, you may be a designer, and you need to implement a table that has certain requirements. All right, so to illustrate this today, I'm going to jump right into our website. Start here. So a little bit about um, Patternfly. We're on patternfly.org slash v4 right now. And this is getting started um, for designers. Hang with me as I try to nav um, on our mirror screen here. Um, so with... Um, <laughs> Designing with Patternfly, um, we provide a variety of resources. So uh, for starters, um, we'll go ahead and introduce the design system to you and how it works. Um, if you are more of a design mind, we offer the sketch library. And here we're offering our components in um, full design, as you'll see in our design system today, um, to be pulled from um, and, and ready um, as reference um, later for developers. And then also we have several things we'll cover um, within our design system. So um, I'll try, I will quit trying to nav through um, on the mirrored screen here. But we have styles, which really gets into um, the colors and the variable system that we offer, um, as well as icons, typography. Um, within our icons page, there's a plethora of things to pull from that really keep your application standardized um, and these are all really great concepts to become aware of whether you're of the design or development background um, and it's a really great foundation a, a great starting place um, for digging into these deeper concepts um, around components so I whether, whether you're a designer or developer I really encourage you to go ahead and um, get get familiar with um, designing with pattern five I see the arrow there. Okay. 
Is that good? Yeah, that's great. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'll stick to the slides. Um, so I really encourage you to explore patternfly.org slash v4. Um, within our design guidelines, we really detail the usage and the usage and behavior of um, the table. So what this, what this will walk through are certain examples for the table and um, the, the different usage and behavior patterns that we would recommend um, for the table. So th there will be, even in this particular use case, you see there, there's a label, one, two, three. On the website, you'll see that we really um, break down the anatomy of, of the table. So at this point in time, you're learning a lot about how this could be um, potentially implemented. And these are great conversations to have from the beginning with your um, developer if you are of um, the design mind. Okay, I mentioned the sketch library. Um, there's a handy link here, but again, it's on the design guidelines on the website. Super easy to download it, and if you don't use Sketch, no problem at all. We have um, plenty of resources available. All right, so the design um, table design has been delivered after you explore those design guidelines um, and you read more about the usage and behavior, you're able to um, understand the requirements and interpret that for your table design. Um, then you'll want to access the documentation on our website. Um, so this documentation, again, covers HTML and React. And you can go ahead and follow along here. This is really the, the cool um, nitty gritty stuff that makes the table possible. Um, so at this point in time, um, we've, we've set you up with success here. Um, if you're using React, we have props and um, more detailed documentation. You could also, um, because we're open source, speak into our GitHub and, and learn more about the life cycle of this table and how it arrived here. Um, and go ahead and pull the code and get going. Right. So, um, yeah, I think the Minions illustrated best this concept of collaboration. Um, but this is something that the Pattern Fly team holds um, dear to us because that is how we make our um, components accessible, modular, and flexible across all of our um, products that we're servicing, um, trying to make them as universal, universally usable as possible. Um, so as you're implementing your table, it's imperative that the designer and and um, developer communicate, which I, I'm sure you've all learned over time. And through this collaboration, you know, it's not always the picture perfect um, story. You might run into a bug. We try to fix bugs as quickly as possible, and our community is very active about filing them when they need to. So we'd encourage you to do the same. Here I've linked the, our HTML and CSS repo and our React repo. Um, should you start using Patternfly and, and need to file a bug, we're on it. We're, we're speeding through those bugs as quickly as possible, and let us know if it's something that's blocking you. Um, so we could um, address it more quickly. All right, and to sum up um, implementation, um, if you have design questions, you, you can work with your designer, and if that's something you think our team can help answer, definitely reach out to us. Um, I'll, I'll be going through a slide that talks a little bit more how to get in touch with us here in a second. Test for accessibility, so even though our components are accessible and ready to use, um, once that gets into your application, um, that's when it will fall on you to test um, accessibility within your application. So within accessibility guidelines, I would highly recommend getting up to speed um, uh, for how to go about that testing. And we're going to be talking about that later today um, at a talk this afternoon. So customizing for features not offered in Patternfly and contributing them back to the community. Um, it is a design system, which means you might see there's the need for customization. And if that's the case, um, we'd, we'd love to, to know a little bit more about that and see if it's a good use case to be used across many products um, and um, go ahead and contribute them back because this is an open source project. Um, so thinking, thinking about that, um, I'll be walking you through some criteria for what would make a great contribution because we hope that you'll become contributors or inspired to be after learning a little bit more about Pat and Fly. So a little bit about our design contribution workflow and timeline. 
In the discover phrase, we're really asking you to become familiar with our repos by filing an issue and telling us a little bit more about your requirements, as well as posting any wireframes. And as a team, we'll come together with you and we'll review those designs and um, we'll talk about where that could potentially live priority-wise. And really, at that time, we're figuring out, out how it could live across um, products and if it, it will live um, across products well. Um, and maybe I should just more generally say applications. So we're thinking about things both inside um, Red Hat um, and outside of Red Hat. In the design phase, we're working with you to kind of finalize those wireframes into visual mockups and interaction specs. Um, and we'll review that with the pattern fly team. In implementation, we'll ask you to be involved with um, the PR process and reviewing those. And we'll update, update the design as required um, during development. So we have we have a team on our side, and as you can um, contribute, if you're interested, um, we have we can support you in whatever um, way that you need to support, um, as well as if you want to take that contribution and run with it in implementation, um, we try to work with you on that as well. And finally, um, this is this is one of our most valuable parts of the process is documentation. So after that's been implemented and put online, we really do need um, these great design guidelines that document behavior and usage. So at that point in time, um, we'd love to work with you to go ahead and um, update the website with do design guidelines um, that talk about um, the usage and behavior of that contribution that you're making. So if anything you've heard today um, interests you and you want to learn more, there are several places you can reach us. Um, we have our mailing list where we send out bi-weekly updates at, at the minimum, sometimes more. Slack, if you have urgent questions, I really encourage you to get in touch with us either on, the, on Slack or our forum. We've got, we've got our team in there every day answering questions that may come up design or development related, so we'll, we'll find the right channel for you and um, the right place on the forum, and you can kind of go ahead and plug into the community there. We have our Patternfly blog, um, and that is hosted on our website, and we update our blog very regularly um, to make sure that any changes that we're seeing that um, touch the system are published um, and especially um, highlighted if we think they'll be important to the community. And finally, our YouTube channel is um, right, a, a series of demos that we host every two weeks. Um, those demos are on a, a Blue Jeans link, a meeting link that's open to our greater community. Um, we have a lot of people attend outside of uh, Red Hat and really want that greater community to be there to hear what we're working on. And um, also, we're going to start hosting a monthly um, community meeting that's um, more of a town hall style. And it's going to be a great, great time to hear from both folks internal to Red Hat and out external to Red Hat um, as far as what they're working on and, and how they've um, approached Pattern Fly. And some key take takeaways today. Um, Open source is flexible and agile, cost effective and collaborative. Design systems get carried over to product design to unify designs across products. And Patternfly is an open source design system. Our goal is to be consistent and to unify teams. Any documentation you need um, is at patternfly.org slash v4 and I'd also encourage you to check us out on GitHub. And the pattern fly contribution process is open to you. Um, so at this point in time, um, I will um, pass this off for questions. And I'll just, if in case you weren't here for our intros, I'll just remind you that um, Gina, Bree, and myself come from a design background, so we'll be answering. We'll be best at answering design questions. And if we don't know the answer to a more technical question, we have um, an HTML and CSS and a React workshop later today, so we'll defer to that. But um, we are here for any of your questions that are more design specific to Patternfly.
someone sat down to customize it, and uh, this is the XYZ, and then uh, a contribution to me, or you guys on it to make it more customizable. Can you tell us the story? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that happens with Patternfly every day. So I do want to I want to correct something that um, it, so it sounds like you you may have heard and um, I might I might have um, mumbled or something. But um, you yeah, yes, the Patternfly components are customizable. Yeah, yes, um, and um, we they're they're really meant to be thought of as um, like like a Lego system building blocks. So you can take one of our components and um, you. You, you can customize it to fit your needs. Um, it's, it's meant to be flexible. That being said, um, at times we've heard that many products needed as um, something of this component that we weren't offering. And that and when an issue is filed, that's the conversation we have every single time. And um, which which makes for an exciting um, project and a very fruitful project because you're really hearing out um, those requirements that might be coming in. So at that point in time, we have evaluate um, if that's something that can be used by many people and, and many contributors and if that is the case that it can be um, used by by many folks who are engaged with pattern fly um, and we think it will exist across ap many applications then we'll go ahead and bring that into the component itself and build that out Yeah, that's a great example. Um, so on our um, website, if you were to navigate to alerts, we had offered this alert, and, and when I say alert, I'm, I'm talking about when you see that alert icon, and there maybe we have some banner text around um, exactly what's what this alert would be about. And we were, asking, we were already offering several several variations, but what was clear when it, we started implementing it in um, in different products, and in users started implementing it in different products, was that it only worked in the context of. Um, like I want to say, like um, a in a traditional alert stuck in like toast, like pop up, and once it, we needed it in line, the styling didn't quite work. Um, so we went back in and we restylized it and introduced a new um, variation, a new example that would include um, different styling for that inline alert. So we're taking in use cases like that all the time, where we find that something we we thought even think is a little bit more universal, it needs a little bit more tailoring. So. Oh, yeah, those are great conversations to have. Um, just a, a note on that, too. There is um, another example that we're going through actually currently is we're looking at, I work on the OpenShift team in Red Hat, so we're using Paddenfly and we're, we're trying to make um, our console as consistent with Paddenfly as possible. Um, and so we do have a lot of list views in the console. And one thing that came up was um, Paddenfly does offer a variety of, of tables and different examples. You can use bulk selection. You can have a number of different filters, text box filters, facet filters there's a combination thereof, global actions, all these things that Patternfly offers sort of built into that so we can use that, customize what we want in the toolbar that makes sense with our table. Um, but one thing we did come across was that for example, um, in certain list views, we might have hundreds and hundreds of items, and there might be three of them that I care about most, and is there a way that I can go ahead and favorite those? So what we did was we opened a, a bug on the pattern fly site, and we said, we would love the opportunity to add favoriting to this, and is this something that you would consider to add to pattern fly? Is this something other products see as well? Would, would this be used by the community, or is this maybe OpenShift specific? So those are the channels. You know, We have that conversation, um, internal or external external products teams can comment on there and say, this is something I would want, or I don't know about this, this maybe seems custom, um, and that way we can have that conversation about, does this belong in patent flight, is this a customization, and sort of go from there. So that conversation is ongoing, and we're, we're working on favoriting and tables now, so um, I think that's a really cool part of patent fly is that that conversation is always open. There you go. Um, have you seen much implementation of people taking, say, an existing design system and sketch and like migrating the entire thing over to pattern by like by receivers like um, uh, pattern by or something like that? Um, are you talking?
talking about like taking an, like an entire existing console and, and really just applying pattern fly onto it? Yeah. This one. Um, so I haven't quite seen that, but what I have seen is that there's that desire that they want to make the switch, but that's 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 the angle. And what needs to be taken into consideration in, in the short term is what are those main elements I could pull in immediately for that migration process. So taking it step by step. And um, we do have a migration guide on the website. So even if you're just interested in trying out one pattern fly component, we make recommendations there about like really high touch um, parts of the UI that would be good to try that out. So one would be perhaps a masthead and a top nav um, because that is kind of really high visibility place where you could potentially test usability within your application. Um, and that migration guide on the website goes a little bit more deeply into that. So we have a lot of people we work with who want to get there eventually, um, but we also recommend that you don't try to take on um, too much at once. We think that's great. And then also provide the support someplace to migrate as needed. If there are no more questions, uh, we'll wrap it up there. And um, the three of us will be here um, all day and, and probably throughout the next couple of days as well. So if you guys have any more questions, and um, feel free to approach us. And also don't forget about the other three talks in the Pattern Fly series. So hope to see you guys there. Thanks. Is this your